In today's video, you're going to be seeing this video in the future from the time I'm recording it. We are talking about the long range here as we look at the end of April into the beginning of May and even beyond as we take a look at June and July on our monthly forecasts later on. We're going to be using a plethora of European models today, the European uh, deterministic model, the European ensemble model, the European weekly model, and then even the European seasonal model. So we are going to be taking a look at everything Today I am very excited. The reason this is in the future, when you're seeing this at least, it's it's current when you're watching it obviously, but why I am talking in the past is because today is day one of my trip to Kentucky. So I am pre-making a bunch of videos. So all of them are going to be long range form, uh, something like that. And really what I want to push home to you guys is that if any major events happen during the next seven to 10 days that I'm going to be on vacation, I will be making some shorter form videos, uh, in addition to the ones that I already have pre uploaded. So rest assured, if anything extreme is happening during the next seven to 10 days, I will be, uh, just briefing you guys on that and giving you guys some information along the way. So I'm not going to be completely gone, but I want to kind of take a break from my daily uh, normal videos, which makes makes it to where I basically have to make a bunch of them ahead of time. So that is what we're doing today. I don't want to ramble on too much. We're taking a look at the temperature pattern overall in the beginning. We'll take a look at the precipitation later on, but we can see a warming trend here uh, in a lot of the eastern United States. And uh, well, that's not going to last too long here. And you're going to actually see that over the course of the next 10 to 15 days, we do expect overall mostly cooler conditions in the east and warmer in the west, actually. It doesn't look like it here, but that is what we're going to see later on. We see some cooler air with an uh, Arctic blast moving in. Again, this is the European deterministic model. So we see this Arctic blast move in. For the east and really what we see is we see a pretty major trough here in the northwest a bit of a ridge across the rockies and central plains and then an even more intense trough here in the east so it's kind of um a roller coaster here like double dip that we're seeing taking place across the united states warmest again along the rockies and those plains as we keep going with this we see a very very brief warm up in the east here where the jet stream is doing something like this uh, at this point, where some warmer air is able to make its way into the east here for later this week, that's going to probably last about three or four days. Starting maybe Thursday, we see this warm up begin. Friday, it's there, but by Saturday, it's already gone. So it's actually two days there that we see this warm up. And this is going to be a very intense Arctic blast actually here in the upcoming pattern. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because this time of year, I think most of us are just hoping for the most nice spring conditions we could possibly see. But the jet stream is currently doing this. It has a very nice ridge sitting over the west here, bringing warmer temperatures in. Uh, and this is basically creating an imbalance that shoves all the Arctic air down into the east. So this is a classic positive PNA pattern that I've talked to you guys about time and time again. Certainly a very, very interesting pattern. Uh, if we would have seen this over the course of the winter at basically any point, we would have seen much more cold and snow uh, over the course of the winter. But it, of course, happened a whopping zero times, it feels like, in January and February, which led towards nearly no snow for most everybody and very, very mild conditions throughout almost all of the winter. Uh, basically, it, with the exception of that late December period during Christmas where we had a very historic Arctic blast take place in the eastern United States, outside of that very, very cold uh, pattern that made it seem like we were going to be seeing a very cold winter because we were getting off to a cold start, it really went downhill from there if you're a cold and snow lovers. If, if you're a warm lover and you don't want any snow, then that was a beautiful turn of events that ended up occurring. We can see that we actually get to the end of this model run on the 26th and we still have Arctic air in the eastern United States. By Arctic air, I don't mean literally 32 or below. What I mean is that air mass from the Arctic has now moved down into the east. That's the most logical definition here. People always want to misunderstand that. Um, but really, it just means that an Arctic air mass has moved in. It doesn't mean that it's literally 10 degrees. Otherwise, I would say it's a 10 degree air mass. I wouldn't say it's an Arctic air mass. Anyway, let's move on to our next model here, our next layer. This is our ensemble model. We get a little bit more accuracy later on with this one because it's actually an ensemble of models taking their mean average here. So usually in a more long range uh, fashion, we get better information here. So we see that Arctic blast take place. We're also going to get further into this one, actually. Arctic blast number two there looking very intense. I mean, the greens are going to be 10 to 15 degrees below normal. So we could see anywhere in here, basically, is seeing those types of 10 to 15 degree below normal temperatures. 
Uh, it's moving in just like this to these areas, the coldest being kind of over your Ohio Valley region here. Uh, that is where we're seeing the coldest of the conditions here, where it's 15 or more degrees below normal here for Sunday into Monday, approximately. Um, we see this last through the week. We get all the way through the next weekend, and it looks like this cold air mass just wants to stay all the way till the end of the model run here on May 1st. We see cold just sitting over the eastern United States. Certainly a big turn of events because it has been an extremely warm spring overall so far through the month of March and April. I mean, it looks like June out there. I'm not going to lie here in Virginia. Um, it, it The leaves have all just uh, bloomed. All the pollen is already gone and it's mid-April. I mean, I can remember some mid-Aprils where we're just seeing the, the first little blooms on the trees. So this is a huge departure from what is typical, especially for this area. Let me know in the comments if you're experiencing anything similar there where you're at. I would be curious. Now, as we take a look at our weeklies model, so we're moving on again another layer here. This is going to be seven-day increments. Week number one here, this is the 13th, 20th. Let's get this to the 17th. That's when I'm uploading this particular video. Let's get this to the 17th here. So this is going to be the 17th to the 24th here. So week number one from the time you're seeing this, we see some cold air in the northwest, that ridge over the plains, and then an even deeper trough here in the east. Kind of that pattern, again, that double dip roller coaster look that we were talking about earlier. That's a weird arrow. But anyway, let's take a look at the 24th to uh, the, the 1st of May here. And we can see it's almost the same here, except there's actually more troughing happening on both sides. So kind of a two-sided uh, trough there with that ridge in between uh, a little bit of an upside down horseshoe there uh, is what I would call it so definitely a very double dip trough type pattern here both coasts seeing that cold is what this model is indicating now the first to the eighth here we see pretty similar conditions but it's more averaged out and what I mean by that is when you have 30 different models all trying to put an opinion together they start to go in different directions over time because they're slightly different from each other so they go outward uh, they start to drift further and further to further apart you know if you're moving in a one degree different direction from somebody in one direction obviously uh you would be very close to each other to start and then obviously as you're miles and miles and miles away you start to drift apart that's how these models are doing basically uh, i don't know if that's a good analogy or not but they spread further and further apart even though they begin close together and we start to get this kind of averaged out very light colors nothing very uh Nothing bold about this prediction at all, I guess is what you could say. And usually we end up not seeing anything like this happen once once we get to this point in the model. But we're going to keep going anyway. We're going to traverse onward. Uh, we can see the 8th through the 15th here. We see more warming here in the central plains. So I do look usually in the longer range here. What I'm looking for is something more specific. And when we see this increasing uh, over time, that is a little bit of a prediction that could come to um, fruition basically because... Um, it is, you know, we're seeing a lot of these models <clears throat> apparently showing this, um, which means there must be something to it that they're seeing. We see that overall the, the east begins to cool there later on in May, so uh, a little bit cooler uh, over time. But I would tell you that this looks more like a negative PNA, honestly, to me, which would definitely be more encouraging warmth in the east. So I think this is two different patterns it's trying to show here. There's probably two major groups of models that are disagreeing entirely. And it's going to be hard to say if those will end up, um, you know, which one will end up being right, but I bet it won't be both. Now, this is the monthly, so let's take a look at May. I don't want to take a look at April here. So in May, we see plenty of warmth here in the West. So this model's saying positive PNA here on the monthly one, a little bit cooler here in the East is what I would say this looks like. Uh, as we head towards June here, uh, we see a little bit less warmth in this area and a little bit more in the East. So we're seeing a different trend here. By July, um, we can see a lot of the southern United States, these coastal areas, seeing warmth a little bit here for the northwest as well, but no cool air really. Um, by the time we're reaching August, maybe ridging more over the west, uh, which would definitely encourage more cooler air to move into the east. And then we can even get to the fall here, September, October, which certainly, as of now, take this with a grain of salt for sure, uh, there looks to be more neutral or below normal temperatures moving into the east. And this definitely looks like a positive PNA or at least a positive PDO uh, pattern, which definitely is very common in El Ninos. And over the course of this week, if you watch every video, you're going to see that's a common theme talking about the upcoming El Nino and the impacts that's going to have on the long range, because we expect basically a lot different 
conditions than we've seen the last three years. We've been in a three-year La Nina. And we're now moving into an El Nino, so we expect big changes this upcoming year. Um, definitely going to be very different than what we see in years past as far as hurricane season, winter, temperature patterns, precipitation patterns. Everything is going to flip upside down. We have big, big changes upcoming that we're going to be talking about. Let's quickly take a look at these uh, precipitation anomalies. As you can see, um, that's going to be the seasonal. We want to take a look at the monthly here. Uh, so for the month of uh, May, we're going to start out because April's already halfway done. We see some above average conditions in here and much more dry here across the northwest and the north central United States. As we move into an El Nino, likely what's going to happen is we're going to see much more of a flow like this. This underneath flow is much more common in El Ninos. And then we basically see this northwest train of storms get shut off. That is what we can anticipate. So let's see if that continues through the model run. We see above average in the east overall here, here for June. Uh, below average in the tropics could also be a theme as we usually see more activity in La Niñas as opposed to El Ninos. Uh, July, same story, kind of above average out here. Uh, below average for the northwest a little bit, although they don't see much in the uh, summer at all. Uh, and then we see, again, the tropics kind of shut off uh, that valve a little bit. August, same story. The eastern United States is seeing uh, an above average amount there. Uh, and then we're seeing this kind of shut off valve here in the in the tropics. So that seems to be a theme all the way through October. The Caribbean seeing less, the United States seeing more with systems just kind of moving through uh, some rainy, stormy systems. Could be a very active thunderstorm year for a lot of the east here. Uh, and a less active hurricane season overall could be what is on the way. So we're going to be talking about that again later on. Be sure to subscribe. We are going to still be uploading daily, although I'm not going to be making videos daily. There will be videos coming out daily, a lot of them long range. Again, we have the hurricane season outlook coming up, the first winter thoughts video. Um, we're not going to be talking about much in that. I know a lot of people are going to be like, this is way too early, but all we're going to be talking about is the El Nino and what that could mean for winter, which is obviously never too early talk about the El Nino that we expect to be coming uh, and what that could mean for the summer, fall and winter, uh, because if, if it comes, it's likely going to be sticking around for quite a while. Uh, and then we have multiple other videos, including a May forecast, the summer forecast, severe weather season forecast for the rest of it. There's so many exciting videos coming up. So be sure to subscribe be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications and also like the video and leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.